from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. You have meddled with the primal forces of nature, and I won't have it. Is that clear? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for joining into the Tom Likas Show. It's like his 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just important, and just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. This is RM on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Tom, Tom okay. to talk to you. Thank you, RM. Well, Tom, just uh, real quick, uh, right off the bat, I wanted to thank you for uh, saving my life and saving me probably millions of dollars of unearned revenue. Uh, I had a girlfriend once for two years. I uh, started listening to you after that went bad, and I'm a new man ever since. Love that. Are you getting more ass than a toilet seat now? I'm getting there. Well, that's basically what I, w I needed your uh, guidance with. I'm uh, currently getting my bullpen set up. So, uh, you know, I'm about, I got about three girls right now that... I can call, and I see him, you know, maybe a couple times a month. And uh, basically my question is, uh, to what degree do these women know they're, you know, in some sort of bullpen situation? Well, you don't have to talk about the specifics of the bullpen, but you don't want to tell any of them that they are exclusive. You don't want to lead them to believe you're in love with them. Yeah, definitely. And you definitely don't want to see them often enough that they think you're seeing them often. Yeah, so I've been doing pretty good with that so far, usually... You know, maybe two or three times a month I'll see him, and I won't talk to him basically in between that. So, you know, I, I don't want to mislead anybody, of course, to thinking that there is a chance of an exclusive relationship. Of course, I don't want them to, you know. Uh, basically, I'm not, uh, so I would just kind of be vague about it. I. The thing is, are they asking? No, no one's really asking. Then there's no uh, need to tell. Okay, so just. Don't even mess with it. If Don't it, even mess. If, if it becomes... Here's a general rule of thumb for guys. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> what, why do you need to talk about anything? Yeah, I don't keep know. Her I mouth, just... Keep her mouth full with your tongue, okay? <laughs> That's it. There is no need to be talking. The less you say, the better. About anything. All right, if don't talk, talk about your much. don't talk about your religion, don't talk about your job, don't talk about your problems. Just don't talk. I see. So talk they as demanding... little you talk as little as you can get away with. Okay. I and if they start demanding what? Basically if they're if they're demanding more of me, you know, more information, more of anything that's I find them. that time to retire them. Well, you don't have to necessarily retire them, but you put them on the disabled list. I see. Uh, you uh, put them on ice for a couple of weeks and move to the next name on the list. I see. Okay. Move them to the bottom rung. All right. You know, if if they start asking questions like that, it's because you're seeing them too often. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so you need to slow it down. Okay, I think I could do that. And never ever let them sleep at your place. Never at no lunches, no brunches, no coffee, no chit chat, no movies, none of that stuff. Okay, that's good. No talking. Remember the teacher used to say that? No talking. All right. I no think talking. I can handle that. I think yeah. I can make this happen. That's how you have to do it. No talking. Perfect. All right, RM. All right, Tom. Thanks. Thanks for your advice. Best of luck to you, Michael. On Like Us One Hundred One with your professor. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, how are you doing today? Great. All right. Well, let's see here. Um, I work. I've been working at this place for probably about a year now, and uh, my ex girlfriend recently got a job there. And ever since then, some of the guys around the workplace have been a little standoffish toward me. And I've already got a slight word of, you know, someone came up to me, asked me if I was dating someone who was underage, which is just completely out of the blue. How and big I'm is the company thinking, you work for? I beg your pardon? How big is the company? Um, It's not huge. Do they have a uh, human resources person? They do. That's where you're going. Well, the problem is, is that there's no actual proof. Of, well, you have proof you know, the person came to you and said this. Well, this, 
I'm sure she is. I'm sure she is. All right, is. so you do you know the name of the person who said that to you? Yes, I do. Do you know what day and approximate time they came to you? Yes. Write down their name, the time they came to you, the day they came to you, and what they said, and then go to the human resources person and said, you are now taking notes on this. Okay, and um, what would you suggest I do as far as um, feeling more comfortable in the workplace? I mean, it is pretty awkward having her work there. It well, grow that. up, son. Grow, grow a pair. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, that's that's, 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 that's that. being like a teenager. Come on. Well, I mean, really, it doesn't matter what people think uh, about who you're sleeping with. What matters is that you have a job, you're employed, uh, if your boss likes you. Yeah. And, and if it's causing problems with your boss, that's something else you got to write down and bring to the Human Resources Department. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had any problems so far as much as that goes. Uh, well, there but... you go. So it's not a problem. Well, at first I didn't seem to have a problem with it, and I was being, I was ignoring her presence entirely until I started noticing that people that worked in her section that I used to talk to kind of on a regular basis started acting kind of funny. And then the question that arose a little bit ago uh, as far as this. When you know, somebody brings you something she said, you are going to write it down in detail. And then okay. you're going to bring it to the Human Resources Department. Okay. The All Human right. Resources Department isn't just for chicks anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm sort of thinking. You know, I, I've always had, I've never had to do that, you know, and I've just been thinking, like, all they're thinking is, oh, they were together at one point and he just wants to get rid of her. This is just a, some sort of a ploy, you know. And that's what I'm worried about is me being a guy, and her being a girl, like, her word is better than mine kind of thing. Again, mm -hmm. that conversation shouldn't be taking place in the office. It's inappropriate. I see. It doesn't matter whether it's believable or not believable. It's inappropriate for an office. Yes. That's all that matters to the Human Resources Department. Okay. I'll remember that, and I will do that. Thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate it. Michael, thank you. All right, it's Lycus 101, 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. It's Gilbert on the Tom Lycus Show, Lycus 101 with your professor. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Um, I got a quick uh, quick uh, question. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm going out with the... Well, not going out, actually. Just uh, I met this girl. who uh, She's a single mother. And uh, pretty much right now, uh, no strings attached. But I just want to know, because I've been uh, following your rules, like, extremely, and I just want to know if I could go for it. No. And if I do, no? Nope. No. Nope. Not unless okay. you've had a vasectomy and you have zero sperm count. All right. So we even if I use condom 100%? No. Condoms leak, condoms break. Condoms are only 95% effective. Do her 20 times, you'll probably knock her up. And she's keeping the baby, and she's going to charge you. Yeah, she kept the baby. That's my point. Oh. No. That no, no. The reason the reason single moms are easy is because they like getting knocked up. Yeah, that, that's true. You don't you, you don't get something for nothing. So that's a definitely no. Again, How many times do I have to say the same thing to you? <laughs> have I, you had a vasectomy? Uh, not yet. No. Well, then the answer is no. All right. That answers my question, then. I think I couldn't have made it any clearer if I had tried. Wackers 101, welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. If baby want a steak, baby gotta wait, because I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Buy ya, lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Wanna get laid? Gotta be an asshole. Spike, use for relaxing, switch a basco, hit it. Quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Pooh. Got a knocked up, but you look in the switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Yes, 101. Welcome to class, sir.
Mike is. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Like Is 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's Like Is 101. I am your professor. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Al on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hola, papa. <laughs> How you doing, Al? I'm doing good. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. Hey, I just, I just gotta, I just need a little help right now. I actually, um, let me see, probably like about a month ago, I was, like, my pen was on the pad and I was about to sign a one year lease for this condo out in Long Beach and I bailed. I bailed. I just, I couldn't find it in me to actually do it. Good and, for you. Uh, huh? I said good for you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I made up the, the dumbest excuse to get an argument over and just like was like, you know what? I don't want to live with you anymore. Forget this. Go to hell. <laughs> it was over, over <laughs> a dog. <laughs> over a dog. <laughs> I love that. For real. For real. So, so right now it's it's been, I can tell you it's been tough, man, because I, I go to school full time and I work full time. And I just want to know somewhere where I can get a quick fix. You know, I don't, I mean, of course, definitely don't want to put a lot of effort, but I mean, don't don't really want it to last more than two or three days or at tops to, to get some, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, maybe you have to go to one of those uh, cougar dens. Oh, uh, but see, I've, I've, I've hooked up with a cougar, and let's just say I have a restraining order against her ex-husband. <laughs> like, like, we're talking chase me down the street while I was running in his little box scion. <laughs> oh, my. That doesn't mean all cougars have that kind of baggage. Oh, oh God! Three kids at age twenty-seven, man. Really? Well, that's that's no good. Oh, but, definitely, definitely. But there's plenty of cougars out there who have never reproduced. Yes, I. I mean, I I love to find them, but the thing is, I mean, I'm twenty-four, so a lot of times I get like, oh, well, you're. I'm like, I'm like borderline. I'm like preteen, you know, like like I'm not old enough, but I'm. You're old, old enough to. You're old enough to drink. So you're old enough to go to a bar. Oh yeah. Of well, that's really all you need to find cougars. <laughs> what about young tail, Tommy? What about that? Well, there's plenty of it out there, and uh, you can certainly get it. Uh, and uh, posing as a rich guy, I know you're calling from Beverly Hills. Do you live there? No, no, I actually live in LA, but I do work in Beverly Hills. I all mean, right. I'm, and what, what do you do? What do you do for a living? I work for AT and T. All right, in Beverly Hills. Is it a storefront AT&T operation or uh, an office? Where do you work? I work at a corporate office. I actually sell um, wireline products. So, uh, so I mean, you know, like, like I, I see a lot of people constantly, you know, and I get a lot of tourists, you know? A lot of people like, oh, I just came out here from Texas and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And it's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I love that. No? Well, that's uh, cool. Yeah, that, that, that sure, certainly shouldn't be difficult. I mean, clearly... Uh, you always want to appear to have more potential than what you're uh, doing now. So yeah, you're yeah. on you're on the fast track. You're an executive as far as you're concerned. Yes, yes, definitely. I walk around with a suitcase and a suit. Perfect. Yeah. In hey, Tom, in by the way, invest in a good watch. Okay. Women look at details like that. Get yourself a Tog Heuer or a Rolex or something and uh, wear that around. I, I would, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of watches, so I kind of just stick to, like, like expensive accessories. Like, like not like that, but, like, electronic devices, you know? Or, or uh, you know what they look at? Belts and shoes. Yes, definitely. Clean shoes is a must, and fingernails, because then you look like... No, a no, 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 beyond that, you want to get a nice designer pair of shoes. Women know who the designers are. They care about that stuff. And if you want to convince them that you're wealthy and successful, that's one way to do it. Of course, of course. Well, thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. Can you actually do me a favor and take me out a new style? I don't know if um if you heard Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. They're calling um Impalin the Palin. No, I haven't heard that. Oh, you got to listen to it. All right. Well, uh, I don't know if we have anything new yet, but when we do, you'll be the first to know. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Like us 101. I am your professor. Let's say hello here to Taylor. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Taylor. How you doing today? Great. 
All right, so I'm a, I'm a college student. Every Thursday I get out of class about 4.45 and hustle in my car for my favorite class Love of the day. It. You know? Love but it. anyways, like I said, I'm a college student. And um, I find myself, I'm 19 years old, and I find myself uh, partying with uh, a lot of old, uh, older crowd. And um, what, should I tell them that I'm younger than them, or should I, should I lie and tell them I'm of age or a little bit older? It only depends. If, if, I mean, look, you could be successful at any age. Yeah. If, if women don't. Game... Women don't care about your. By the way, Cougars love it. If you're 19, Cougars love that. <laughs> they love that. Yeah. In fact, uh, I'm sure there's a Cougar out there who'd love to buy you a drink. Hell yeah. So, uh, so if my game is on top and I'm I'm just spitting an unbelievable game, it shouldn't matter what age. That's exactly I'm, right. Oh yeah. All right, Tom. Thanks a lot. Hey, can you take me out with a bog tug and then blow me up? There you go, Taylor. <laughs> Mike on the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Um, calling to say uh, I listen to you often. You know, I love the show, um, but I'm kind of going against the rules, man. Um, I'm dating a single. Well, uh, I'm banging around with a single mom, and uh, it's getting a little serious. Well, I I'm, why, why are you calling here? Well, because I need some advice. I need you to tell me, like, it's wrong. I mean, it is wrong. I know it is. I know. Um, so why are you doing it? Well, I mean, you got other, no game. Other than it's, it's a you've good got thing. no game. Oh, I got game. You got game. There's more women out there who are not single moms, and you'd be doing them. No, I, she's uh, she's not the only one I'm kind of messing with right now. Uh, why well, then? Then why do you need this one? Well, I don't need her. It's just yeah, you do because if you're breaking that rule, there must be a reason you need to do it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, well, uh. I'm not against going, like, banging around with single moms. Well, you will be if they get pregnant. I, I Oh, I use protection and stuff. Doesn't matter. Condoms are only 95% effective. And uh, what birth control is she using? Uh, she's actually not right at the That's moment. That's right. And you know why she's not. Yeah, I know. Well, tell, her, doesn't... tell everybody why she's not using birth control. Because she wants my kid. <laughs> she wants to have a baby. No, I know, and well, at least she's not lying about it, you know? Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but you're stupid enough to keep having sex with her. Yeah, that's true. I know. And then later, when she gets pregnant, she's going to say, well, I told you I wasn't on birth control. Yeah. And she's going to say that that's justified that she's having a baby because you knew it and you kept going anyway. So true, so true, man. So, uh, you know, if you don't stop, you're doing this at your own risk. And trust me when I tell you, uh, this is not the lottery. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're much more likely to lose this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Odds uh, are against it. Yeah. So, uh, but you're going to keep seeing her, right? Uh, actually, um, I, I intend on telling her soon, probably. Soon? What? What do you mean soon? You can get a few more uh, knocks of the I don't, uh, the punching bag before you leave. I mean, <laughs> no, no. You stop it now. I don't see her all the time. I you don't stop talk. it now. You've done her for the last time. Well, not, well, maybe You've done time. her for the last time. Yeah, that's actually... Yeah. Every time you have sex with her, there is a risk. Yeah, I'm risking it. And why would you do that? No more risking it, Tom. No so more. it stops now. It stops today. That's it. Can you take me out Kobe style? Yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's like it's 101. I am your professor. Let's say hello here to uh, look at things. Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. I've been listening to you for like about uh, four or five, not actually four or five months now. And uh, prior to before, I, you know, I never heard of you. Um, I was in this relationship for two years. Pretty much before that relationship, I was uh, very depressed. Um, I didn't really, uh, you know, I couldn't get over this one girl I had dated previously. You know, I was stupid, whatever. And um, I didn't meet this girl. You know, I felt like, oh, you know, I'm not going to be single anymore. You know, I'm not I'm not going to be alone. So I started dating her, you know. It got, it, it got serious, you know. But um, then she started kind of like being really controlling towards me. And kind of like, uh, tell me, do this, do that. 
you know, like me like a dumbass, I'll be like, all right, you know, I'll go ahead and do it and stuff. But um, finally, you know, like I always felt like, man, you know, I want to get out of this. I want to get rid of her, you know. But I couldn't, I couldn't like get the courage to do it. So finally, you know, like three, four months ago, I listened to you on, on the radio, and I was like, wow, you know, what this guy's saying makes a lot of sense. So like, like that gave me like courage. Like I guess because like knowing that other people out there feel the same way that I was feeling. It's like, damn, this girl's controlling. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get rid of her. You know, and um, just went home that day, told her, you know what, it's over. Called her. She kept calling me like a 100,000 times, came over to the house. I, you know, I didn't open the door, went to my work. I kicked her out, you know. Um, she emailed me everything, and I just cut her out cold, and it's been the best decision that I've done since I turned 21 and I took my first beer. <laughs> wow. Look at you. And now are you getting more ass than a toilet seat? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm banging girls left and right. Uh, my friend, I have a buddy that comes up and down from um, down south. And, um, you know, he's like, dude, now that you're single, let's hit the clubs, let's hit the, you know, wherever we can. You know, and we've been, you know, just painting the town red, you know? Robert, I couldn't be more proud of you if I were uh, your own dad. Let me tell you that. Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likis. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likis Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Lola on the Tom Likis Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? It's, it's a question. <laughs> oh. So... I actually have a question for you, though, Tom. Yes. So I've been dating my guy for about three and a half years, and, you know, we've done the whole moved in together, you know, got an apartment. Why, 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 have, you, why have you done that? Because uh, I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. Why do you think that? Well, because it was a better situation than what I was currently in with my family. Yeah, and you couldn't find a roommate or something? Um, no, actually. Cause yeah, no, you could because you're in. There's 11 million people in Southern California. You could have found a roommate. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. You can't tell me there was nobody in Southern California who needed a roommate. <laughs> I don't think I could have afforded it at the time, though. You wanted to show how mature you were by moving into a relationship you weren't ready for with somebody you weren't sure about. And uh, save money on rent at the same time. That's what you wanted to do. And why do I know this? Because I did that. Really? Right. So I know why you did it. <laughs> yeah, I pretty was, much. I was married at 18. Oh, wow. Living with my girlfriend at 17. How stupid was I? <laughs> That's actually, I started dating him when I was 17. Right. See, I left home at 16, moved in with my girlfriend at 17, married her at 18. Wow. Divorce her at 20. <laughs> So what I'm trying to do, I guess, is is find out an ethical way to to leave. I mean, I what do you mean an ethical way to leave? In a sense, like without hurting his feelings, or, or no, no, there's no such thing as that. This is part of growing up, darling. Really? Yes. You have to do what's best for you, and whether it hurts other people's feelings is irrelevant. So just say, hey, by the way, I'm taking off, and that's pretty much it. That's correct. Really? You wow. can, yes. You tell him, you know, you give him notice so he can find a roommate or whatever he needs to do. Okay. Uh, you're not going to find a place right away anyway. But yeah. you need to let him know this is coming down the pike and you're doing it. Okay. Okay. By the way, how is the relationship? You're kind of getting tired of it and it's, it ain't what it used to be. Well, it's t it's actually, you know, because he, he, you know... He's gone for some time, and then he comes home for some time, and I'm a very monogamous person. Where does he go, and why? He works um, in, in the oil rigs. All right. And so he's gone, and then he comes home. I see. So you didn't want anyone with an education or a future. <laughs> um, well, when he first started dating, he was going to college, and now he's, well, not. Right. So that's one of the reasons you're sick of him. And, I mean, typically now it's good, but uh, it's just, I, I I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, gone from 17 into being a committed relationship into, you know, checking in with him sometimes, you know, the way I did my dad. And it's not, it's, it's not what I want to do anymore. No, that's not an uncommon feeling, Lola. 
and then you know for anyone else out there in a young committed relationship it's it's hard i mean don't do it <laughs> right you so. now what are you going to do you're going to get your own place you're going to get a roommate what are you going to do um i've actually talked to a couple friends who say you know on the dime if i'm ready to go they'll be here you know with their vehicles to help me get my stuff out so i think i think i'm gonna i'm gonna let them know tonight actually that you know this is what's gonna happen <laughs> good that's what you gotta do his feelings will be hurt that's how it works okay because he has his own needs that he's concerned about not yours right so so one of his feelings are hurt yeah. Do you know how many times I've had to tell women it's time for you to go? <laughs> I can only imagine. Because I own my house. I'm not leaving. Right. Do you know how long it took some of them to get out? Months. <laughs> Do you know one of them took a year and a half? Just to get out? I had to take her to a therapist <laughs> because she wouldn't listen to what I was saying. I had to take her to the therapist. And then I had to say to the therapist, here's why we're here. <laughs> I've been telling her something, and she's not listening. So I want to say it to you, Dr. Therapist, and then I want you to tell her what I'm saying. So she yeah. said, okay, what is it you wanted to say? I said, I'm not happy in this relationship, and I want you to leave. And so the therapist turned to her and said, do you hear what he just said? And uh, when she started to yell and scream, the therapist said, wait a minute, I want you to repeat what he just said. <laughs> and it took a year and a half of sessions like that for her to get the point. Wow. A year and a half. Wow. That's but you see, I shouldn't have been worrying about her feelings or where she was going to go. I should have just given her the goddamn boot. Yeah, I, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. Because really you know what that does when you worry about their feelings and, and then it takes forever? You we'll can't date that. it. You can't date anybody else. <laughs> If you do, you have to hide it or alter it, or you can't bring anybody home, can't stay out late, can't get to your new life. You're waiting to start your new life, and you have to wait until this person gets the message. Right. You, that's not an option. Right. I need, to, I need to, you know, 20 years old, I need to live my own life at this point. That's right. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, Lola. Appreciate the call. Like us 101. You're talking to your professor here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Nate on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Likas. Yes. How are you doing, sir? Doing okay, sir. Hey, I made you proud. I was, uh, I was dating this 26-year-old, uh, girl and, uh, she was hot and, but there was some, uh, some weird factors. She never wanted me to go back to her place. So I, uh, she always, we always just went to my house and messed around. And then I was dating her for about two months. And then when she finally took me back to her place, I found out that she had two kids. She never told me, she never told me anything uh, about them. Right. And lying to me, especially about something on that level, is zero tolerance. I'm like, you know what? I didn't sign off for this, and I just walked out the house. As Very soon as she nice. Said, I met him. Very nice. I'm like, that's against the rules. Like it even says so, I'm like, I'm out. Did she flip out? She, she didn't even know what to say. She was speechless. <laughs> I didn't, you know what? To tell you the truth, I didn't stay there long enough to find out. Good for you. I'm like, like it says, zero tolerance. I got to listen to like it, so I just left. I'm very proud, Nate. That, that's the way you do it. For all these people listening, listen to like it. You'll save yourself a lot of money. Nate, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm your professor. It's Like Us 101 every week at this time. Here's John on the Tom Like Us show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. What's happening? Not much. Hey, I just got a question, man. I, I got uh, I got two kids, 32. I got a 21-year-old girlfriend. Got her to move in. She, uh, she takes care of the kids, uh, does all the cleaning, pays half the rent. And uh, I'm thinking about marrying her. I was with the last one for nine years, and I've been with this one for about a year. And uh, I don't know if I'm going. I, I ain't getting any younger. Well, I, why, I yeah, but why do you need to be married? Exactly. How wait a minute? How old you are? Thirty-two. No, no, that's not a question. How old, how old you are is a question in the uneducated community. Okay, this is. I'm an educated individual. How old you are is the beginning of a sentence. How old you are uh, is irrelevant when you're a man and it comes to getting married. Right. 
I mean, do you could be eighty years old and get married because, as a man because that you know men are still able to reproduce at eighty. And so it doesn't matter how old you are. You're not getting any younger. What, is there some deadline for you to get married? No, no. I just remember hearing you on an episode before talking about a trophy wife. So, right, but, but, but again, I, I, my preference is you don't get married at all. Okay. I mean, what, what do you have to gain by getting married? Probably not much. I mean, what would you get that you're not getting already? Right. I hear you. I mean, if you're getting everything you want already, then why uh, experiment with ruining a good thing? Okay. Yeah, she's got no kids. I have a vasectomy. I ain't having any more. I'm Perfect. Yeah. And she's not begging you or giving you an ultimatum to get married? No ultimatum. She's in the round a little bit here yeah, and there. Right. And you know what I mean? That's how it comes usually about after about a year or so. So... Let I don't know. Know. I, 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 when I broke up with the last one after nine years with her, I, I was messing around for about a year, and then I met this one. And why do you always have to be in a relationship? I don't know. <laughs> Might have some deep seated uh, childhood issues there, maybe. Well, I mean, look, I, one time I was like that, but I got out of it. Right. Right. I've been years now of living alone and loving it. Right. I got a partner who does that, and he loves it. He just says, I'm going to sit back and watch this one while I put my feet up. Aren't you learning anything from this, John? Pretty much, yeah. I just, it's hard in my, my work. I have my kids a lot, and I need help in that area. Hire so a I, nanny. It's cheaper. Okay. Right. But the nanny doesn't provide the extra the extra benefits of having somebody living there, though, too. You know what I mean? Uh, you. What are those benefits again? Getting laid. And you can get you can get laid without people living in your house. Did haven't you ever had sex with someone who doesn't live at your address? Yes. <laughs> See, you can do it. <laughs> okay. They don't have to live at your address for you to get laid. Right. Can I tell you something? Nobody lives at my address. You think I don't have sex? No. I'm the only one who lives there. Right. But I'm having sex. Right. But I don't have to pay anybody's rent. I don't have to pay anybody's car payment. I don't Correct. have to pay off their student loans. Correct. I, I, I don't have to rescue deadbeat relatives, or uh, I don't have to have their grandparents moving in with me and paying for their expenses. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know which one of these apply to you, but I bet you I'm going to hit one. Well, she pays half her half her way. Uh huh. She does pay half her way. So she pays all the utilities. She pays. She she pays a little, probably a little less than half of her way. Well, you just said half. Now it's less than half. Okay, a little less than half. I uh, bet she doesn't pay for everything. Not everything, though. No. Right. But it is it is cheaper than it was if I were to carry the whole load by myself. But it really isn't because you have to buy things for her. Correct. I hear what you're saying. You know my my maid Raina, who's worked for me for almost twelve years, and she's wonderful. Okay. She's fantastic. I have never bought her a purse. Okay. Never paid for her to go to uh, had to get her hair done. Okay. Right. Never bought groceries and said, here, let's make dinner. Right. Right? Does her work. She has a defined paycheck, and then she goes home. Okay. You see? So believe, you think you're getting all these wonderful services, but <laughs> you're not getting them at a discount. You're paying a premium for them. Okay. Because I have sex, my house is clean, my laundry is done, and I'm paying a lot less than if somebody lived in my house. Right. Hmm. So, you know what? Take a take a pad and a piece of paper and start writing down all the times you spend money on her and how much you spend in a week. Okay. And see how much it's costing you. All right. And that includes all the utility bills that she doesn't pay 100% of, doesn't pay her 100% of her share. Okay. That includes if you pick up the tab at the supermarket. That includes if you put gas in her car or make a payment for her, whatever it is you do. Okay. Start writing them down and see how much that's costing you. And, and you'll remember I said this, that eventually <laughs> uh, you're going to find out that it would have been a lot cheaper to hire out, to have outsourced that work. <laughs> okay. Brenda, what did you want to say to John? Oh, my God. Don't. Do not marry her. Please. Like, it, it's just cheaper to just 
have her have her around for as long as she'll stay around. Okay. I mean, really, she's 21 years old. She's 21. She's, you know, she wants to be princess for the day. Okay, and that's what's going to happen, is you're going to marry her, she's going to be princess for the day, then she's going to end up getting pregnant because, she, you know, you have yours, she wants to have, you know, ours. Then you're going to have another child support Not case. by me. I'm fixed. Oh, that's right. You're fixed. Okay, well, good Good for you. That's good. No, seriously, dude, though, really think about it. I mean, I think you're getting pressured into it because she's hinting around, and it's it's only been a year. You really don't right. even know her. You know what? She's, she's taking care of your kids. She's doing all that right now because she wants it to lead to marriage. She knows that. If she wasn't doing all that, you wouldn't even think about even marrying her. Correct. Right? Right. I just... With all my heart, do not do it. I'm glad, I'm glad I called in. I'm, I'm glad you did too, John. Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom Likes Show. Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. I am your professor, Pierre, on the Tom Likas Show. He hung up at the last possible second. It's Seth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Long time listener, fourth point caller. Thank you so much. Um, dating a girl, three years. Uh, I'm 30, she's 28. She's great in bed and whatnot, and, uh... I told her from day one, no kids, no marriage. She wants a ring as a promise. Her parents just got married. They were together for 20 years before they got married. They, you know, they're pretty old, whatnot. But she just wants a promise ring. What should I do? Well, a promise ring is just a stalling tactic for a man. It's a promise to make a promise to make a promise. Uh, but uh, I don't understand why you need to uh, uh, tolerate this. I mean, why would you tolerate, uh, what is it, an ultimatum or a demand? What is it? Oh, not, no ultimatum, nothing of that nature. Well, why don't you just, why don't you just, thank you, zero tolerance policy. Yeah! Go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas to get the whole list of words you can't say on the air, as you'll see on the list. And I wrote this list myself, the F word, uh, not permissible. So if you're not aware of that, the F word or its uh, adverb version, not aware that those words are not allowed on the air, go take a look at the official list, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. It's my latest blog. Go take a look. 1-800-5800-TOM. Peter on Likus 101. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you? Great. Well, I have the best, best, best Tom Like a success story ever. Sounds good. All right. So my business, um, which will uh, remain anonymous, uh, sent me on a business trip last week. And we're in our meetings, and one of the high executives, she's a, a young chick, and she decides to take us out, and me and a couple of guys that work with me. We end up going to the club, but on the way to the club, um, she decides to pass by picking up some douchebag that's in love with her. I mean, just in love with her. So we end up showing up to the club, and, you know, this idiot uh, starts throwing money. Uh, we get bottle service. Uh, we go VIP and everything. And, you know, this guy, at the beginning, I was worried. I was like, is this, you know, guy going to leave us stuck with the bill? So I was like, you know, I don't, you know, I was like, I don't know if I want to drink. So all of a sudden, you know, this guy keeps ordering, you know, uh, bottles. And I said, you know what, guys, we're going to drink, get a, cag a taxi and, you know, get the hell out. So as we're, you know, we're like, you know, I'm not drinking, but I have, you know, these bottles. And all of a sudden I, I tell the guys, you know what, forget we're from the company we're from. I said, we're record producers for Epic uh, Records uh, Latino. We're for the, for the Latino branch. So we start telling people that, you know, we work for Epic uh, Records Latino, 
And all of a sudden, guys are buying us drinks, making us offers. You know, oh, you guys say, you know, we're going to take you out for the, for the weekend, blah, blah, blah. So we're fooling the guys. Now we go on to the girls. The idiot that spends all this money, he passes out, so we have to carry him. So the girl that he falls and he's crazy madly in love with, I end up banging her at the end of the night. And at the club, at his expense, pretending to be a record label uh, producer, I meet a chick that ends up taking me Friday night, and I bang her on Saturday. <laughs> now, does Epic Records, the name still exist? I, I thought that was, it, it does exist, because I, I, I thought I, it had. I, I, I think it does, but there's, I don't think there's. You don't, you're thing not even I, sure. The Latino <laughs> division of Epic Records. You're not that, even sure. That, the Latin uh, division. So it was. By the way, thing. that's not a criticism. If you can get away with using the name of a defunct record company and it gets you laid, that's even better. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And then you know, here I am, Mister, you know, producer, you know, telling the girl, you know what, I'm gonna fly you back to L.A. I'm gonna show you L.A. And this chick, you know, she she's a dentist, so I thought she would be a little bit smarter than that, but I guess not. And you know, she took me out to dinner. Friday, she took me out to dinner. Saturday, took me to a club and paid for everything. And not to mention the idiots that I met there. You know, they took me out Friday night and showed me around. You know, the city. You know, you know, we we'll remain anonymous. But nonetheless, I got laid at the other idiot's expense. That he probably easily spent a good grand because he was, you know, buying four bottles of uh, Belvedere. You know, two bottles of Great Goose, and I was like, this idiot. Like, why would he do that? But, you know, then he ended up passing out, so the girl that he was spending the money for ended up banging me. I love it. <laughs> I think that is fantastic. And, you know, and the funniest thing, I said, you know what? I have to, I have to, I have to call Tom and tell him about it. Because it, it was the funniest thing. And I told the guy, I said, you guys ever heard of Tom? You know, one of the guys was from, you know, another East Coast, you know, from your home where you were born. Um, and, um... You know, I asked him if he's ever heard of you, and he said, no. I said, well, you know, if you want to thank somebody, because they ended up getting laid, too. I said, if you want to thank somebody, don't thank me. I said, thank the professor. I think right, that Tom. is fantastic. I am so proud of you, Peter. Our email address, Tom, at blowmeuptop.com. Another hour of Like Us 101 is coming up straight away. The Tom Like Show.